we're going to try a sample problem in which we need energy, but we also need another flavor. So let's look at a problem of a roller coaster and a big loop the loop. So in this roller coaster, we're going to have the roller coaster car start up here at a specific height that we're going to call h. Our roller coaster has a radius r, and we want to know, right, what's the minimum height for h that this can safely go all around. So what we might be thinking is, right, is there another critical point other than at the top? And the answer is yes. At this point, what we really need to be doing. And we kind of want to think about this, right? If this is stopped right here, it's going to fall down. It has to move at a specific velocity in order for it to keep moving. So we want to look a little bit more at this part. And as we look a little bit more at this part, we might notice that this is circular motion and that we have some things to know about circular motion, namely that the acceleration in the radial direction has to be v squared over r or r omega squared. So up until this point up here, right, we have a whole bunch of different changing forces, a whole bunch of different changing accelerations. So we want to use an energy framework for most of this, talking about our initial states versus our final states, that our initial potential energy plus our initial kinetic energy will be equal to our final potential energy plus our final kinetic energy. Now what's nice for this is that, right, we want this to kind of start at zero, so we're going to have this be zero, and then we can start looking at what we're going to have for this. So at initial point, it's going to be the mass of the car, gravity times h, so we can say mgh, this is zero, at our final stage, right, here is radius of 1, so up here this is another radius, so this would be mg times 2r. And then for our final kinetic energy, we would have 1 half mvf squared. So right now we have a little bit of a problem of we don't know the height and we don't know the final velocity. But we can go back up to here and think about what's going on here. Right? If we look at a free body diagram of this, the forces on this cart are going to be gravity pulling down. And then as this goes around, there's also the rails, which are going to have a force going down as well, this normal force. So if we're looking for the minimum safe height, then what's going to happen is that this normal force is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller until it goes to so we will say that our acceleration in the r is our sum of the forces in the r over the mass, which is just now going to be mg over the mass. And we can do another cancellation nicely enough. m over m cancels out. And now we can use this approximation that it's v squared over r. So now this v squared and this v squared are the same. So now we can say g equals v squared over r or v squared equals gr, and plug all of this into this final velocity. So now when we do that, right, we'll use a new color just to show what's going on. We have mgh is equal to mg2r plus 1 half m, and then replacing vf squared with gr. Let's look at this equation right here as we have it. What do we have that's common with this? We have an m here, an m here, an m here. So we can cancel, cancel, cancel. Similarly, maybe not as easy to see, we have a g here, a g here, and a g here. So we can do the same thing, cancel, cancel, cancel. So let's write this out from here. We've got h is equal to 2r plus 1 half r. Well, we could do this if we wanted to be really nice with fractions or things like that. We could say 2 is equal to 4 halves or whatever we want. We could say we can say 2.5r or 5 halves r, whichever one we prefer. And so that's the minimum height that this needs to be in order for when it goes around this loop-to-loop -loop for the cart to stay in motion or the track and not. 